Well, the first thing you need to design a kit is a good pen. And this one is, this one's dragging. It's skipping off the paper. Something's, you know, it seems like a small thing, but it's like pushing a shopping cart with a bum wheel. It just drives you crazy. So a blank page is always, um, not intimidating, but it's, well, it just kind of stops you in your tracks because you're, you're <coughs> faced with the fact that you have to fill it. And it's one of the most difficult things to do is creating something from nothing, which involves a lot of this, which is just, <laughs> I'm, I'm staring at the page and nothing's coming yet, but I know it will. And I have to just sort of trust it, trust the process that it will come. This is a kit of the month, which means uh, we, we release these once a month if you subscribe. And it's a small size, so I have some rules I have to stick to. I have to stay within the confines of, of a given footprint. And that's difficult, of course, because if you're doing something creative, you just want to keep going and never stop because creativity is usually, um, well, it's kind of like an explosion uh, in your head and it's hard to contain it. So that's what you have to do is contain yourself, basically, anytime you're making something from nothing. And this isn't just for design or art. It's for, you know, anything where you're making something. Uh, if you're building a deck for your house and you, you only can go eight feet, but you really want to go 20, but you only got the space and the time and the money for eight, it can be frustrating. So a lot of this is frustration. Uh, so this one I went into knowing um, kind of what I want to do. I know I want it to be uh, a small print shop and I want it to be flat as far as the roof. Generally there's an idea for a kit and it starts with a roof line uh, for some reason and that's probably because it's you know often um, seen from above and seen as a model from the top uh, and even the simplest kit like this this is pretty you know it's not that uh, complex and that's that's probably the challenge too is how do you make something simple as a cube or a box be interesting and with the kit of the month designs, uh, given that they're so small, uh, there's usually a primary element and a secondary element and maybe a, a tertiary element. Uh, so the secondary element is usually some kind of add-on to the side of the building or um, an overhang on the side. It's just something to give it a little bit more interest and a little bit more life, uh, even though we're within this small footprint. Um, Be something on the roof and it's a matter of redrawing it over and over again it's almost like building it on paper e even a kit like this can be drawn over and over again um, to get exactly what you're looking for until it gets there I mean it just that's the process um, it's done when it's done, and you know it when you see it. You know, it's like any kind of painting. You know, if an artist is painting a painting, they just kind of know when it's finished, and it's something you probably can't describe to someone, but uh, when you see it, you go, yep, that's enough. Uh, I use a lot of reference books, uh, a lot of old photos. And um, even the smallest kit gets some research. Oh, there you are. Okay. This photograph here is uh, 
where I got the idea for our second kit back in 2002, a Redbird Taxi. And sometimes it's just the smallest little section of a photograph uh, that inspires you and sets you on a, on a path to wherever you're trying to go. And uh, this was one of them. So I might not find exactly what I'm looking for, but it just gets you in the mindset of architecture and architectural elements and buildings. Uh, and I kind of always try to live there uh, every day and think about it. Um, and I sketch every day. Um, that's a must. That has to happen. It's pretty much every night for at least an hour to two hours. So I have a few of these sketchbooks filled over the last 20 years. So if I'm drawing the same thing over and over again, the same set of doors, the same door arrangement, I'm pretty sure that's what I want for that. But on the roof here, I keep changing that. So that's where things are, are, are stuck, I'm, where I'm stuck. And that's why it's so important to just keep draw it again and again until you get it. And then once you start settling on the design itself, you can start detailing it. Well, what, what small details, what 3D printed details, what metal details will I be using? Because uh, that also informs part of the sketch or part of the design. And then what kind of door? Is it, is it a, a four light door? Is it a two light door? Is it a single light door? All that makes a difference. We're trying to create as many layers as possible so that it has texture, and if it has texture, it has life, and if it has life, it's, it's interesting. And I've added this little addition on the side, it kind of balances this rooftop addition out as well. This would be housing for some kind of belts that run some printing equipment maybe. It has to be balanced, right? So that's what that is. That tips that in the right direction. So now I'm pretty close. I'm very happy with uh, this little element on the roof. These are not always based on prototypes, but I've found that they're, of course, uh, and this is a common statement found in modeling and, and model railroading is that there's a prototype for everything. And that's usually the case. So there's lots of uh, creative license you can apply and not worry about, well, do they have one of those? Is that real? Is that somewhere? Chances are it is. Uh, there's enough variety in architecture and buildings and, and what people have done. I'm never concerned about that. I'm more concerned that it just looks right and it looks balanced and it looks natural. Uh, and then once you put this in a three-dimensional form of a model, it has to do that as well. So I think uh, this is what we're gonna go with. So now this gets translated into a computer drawing so this usually starts with a door um, because the door again is like the one thing that your eye knows for sure how big it is. And from there we can sort of make all the proportions correct <clears throat> if it looks right with one door. So that's what I always start with. And again, I'm trying to work within dimensions of, of uh, what we cut on the laser cutter uh, for efficiency. So, you know, if we have a 24 inch sheet of material, uh, I'm gonna try to make it so it fits as many as I can, but without uh, any waste at the end of the sheet. So we run two PCs here for AutoCAD. Um, the one on the right, which you might have seen in the other shot, is newer, and that's the latest CAD, which I'm not crazy about, uh, only because I've been on this one for so long. So this is a much older version, but it's just a vector drawing, so I'm, I'm fine with using it. So I'm, I'm kind of doing what looks right first versus what fits on the sheet, and then we kind of can cut it back a little bit if we have to later. But for now, uh, we're doing with what looks right. And usually I keep a uh, previous kit of the month 
nearby just for scale and reference and sort of keep me in my lane as far as how big it should be. So this is our 64th kit of the month since 2019 and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun making these because we can try a lot of different things uh, every month, different materials, different subject matters. So this worked out well. Uh, we can fit exactly three of these on a sheet. Each sheet's 24 inches and we've maximized our uh, clapboard usage so there's not too much waste. And we'll cut this. So we're gonna cut this out of clapboard. This is HO scale clapboard from Northeastern Scale Lumber. So that's just a brief look at uh, how we make the kit of the month kits every month. Um, it's uh, there's a lot more to it, of course. Um, you know, with production and producing the kits and building the model itself, uh, which we're going to do in another video. But at least you can get a, a glimpse of what uh, the steps we take to get these made. And I want to thank our Patreon supporters. Uh, if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff, uh, sneak peeks, and uh, kit previews, uh, what we're doing on our layout and other stuff that we do in the shop every week. Check us out there. We post twice a day, and we also make an exclusive video we only show on Patreon. Uh, so we hope to see you there. And please check out FossKits.com. Uh, if you do want to join the Kit of the Month Club, you can choose four months, six months, or 12, and you'll get a new HO scale kit to build every month, and it's a great way to improve your skills and, of course, populate your layout uh, with new structures. See you next time. Thanks.